Gloria a Dios, hermanos. Estamos. We're here today uh, with Michael Fernandez Ministries. Glory be to God. We're here to discuss uh, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, how it works, how he, he's a person. He's not some mist. He is an actual person. He's the third person of the Trinity. The Bible speaks very clearly the three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. But we need, before we continue about that, but I want us to read in Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. As, as a lot of people are going to listen on TV Uh, a lot of people don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, or the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And they automatically try to say that it doesn't work for these days, that, the, that ended with the disciples, that miracles don't happen, that that's, that's some religious individuals believe that. But I just want to forewarn you that if we speak against the Holy Spirit, If we speak against the Holy Spirit, we, the scripture, let's read what the Bible says if we speak against the Holy Spirit. Okay, here we go. Matthew chapter 12, verse 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto, unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself brought to desolation. Every city of the house divided against itself shall not stand. Okay, this is Jesus talking about how the Pharisees and Sadducees accused him being possessed of the devil while he cast out demons. And Satan cast, and he says here, it says, Jesus knew their thoughts. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, divided against himself, brought to desolation every city of his house, divided against himself, should not stand. They accused Jesus, it says, but in verse 24, let's go back a little. It says, But the Pharisees heard it, and they uh, fellows did not cast out devils by the Beelzebub, the prince of devils. They were accusing Jesus of casting out demons and doing miracles by the power of Satan. Okay? And he, Jesus said to them, and he knew their thoughts. He knew what they were thinking. He said, A kingdom divided against itself will be brought down to desolation. Every city or house divided against itself should not stand. In other words, Jesus is saying to the Pharisees, You're saying that I'm casting out devils by the power of the prince of devils. He was saying to them that a kingdom against itself will never stand. It will divide. It will be destroyed. So they were accusing him, being the son of God, being God the son, as having the power of Satan and casting out demons. So let's go for, go, go further right here. It says here, Satan casts out Satan, is divided against itself. How shall then the kingdom stand? And if I, by the Beelzebub, cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, therefore they shall be judged. If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. In other words, Jesus is telling them, he's casting out the powers of demons by the power of the Holy Ghost. But God forewarned these Pharisees that you need to be careful of accusing him of casting out demons by the power of demons. They were accusing that Jesus was using the force of Satan when he was using the power of the Holy Ghost. Let's go further. In verse 30, 31, let's read this. Therefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto man. But blasphemy against the Holy Ghost should not be forgiven. Whatsoever you speak a word against the Son of Man, she will be forgiven him. But whosoever speak against the Holy Ghost should not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. It's showing me here that it's very important to those when we go into this topic about the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, healings, miracles, 
that these last days that the power of God manifests, that if we lay hands on the sick or cast out devils, don't catch yourself saying that I'm casting out demons with the power of Satan because the Holy Ghost in me is the one doing this. The Holy Ghost is the one manifested in these last days. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Father is in the throne. The right hand is Jesus Christ who intercedes for us. But the Holy Ghost in these last days is the one talking to the church. But I'm warning people, be careful. Don't be saying, well, he got the power of the devil casting out the, the demons. Well, he got the power of the devil to heal the sick. Be careful. Because God says, if you accuse one of my brethren or one of the sons of God, saying that they have the power of Satan in them, casting out those demons, or have the power of Satan in them to heal the sick, be careful. Because that's blaspheming, blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Jesus said right here, He'll forgive you if you speak against the Father and against Him. But He won't forgive you if you accuse that the power in Him or in the body of Christ that is manifesting in these last days. Be careful that you don't catch yourself committing that sin. Because that's one sin He won't forgive you. He made it very clear. You'll be forgiven for everything else. You speak against Jesus, say He's this and He's that. But when you say He has the Spirit, of the devil or the body Christ has the spirit of the devil when ministers lay hands on the sick and, he, and, and, and do miracles in the name of Jesus and you say they have demons in them and that that's the devil beware that is a very dangerous area to walk. well I don't believe God would punish me well that's how some of the disciples uh, would happen to Ananias and Sapphira when they lied to the Holy Ghost I'm going to show you in the Bible what happened to them how they fell dead to lying to the Holy Ghost. God the Holy Ghost. You can't play and criticize the things of God just because you don't believe in speaking in tongues or laying hands on the sick. Shh. Just keep your mouth shut because you could endanger your spirit, soul, and body. Because God made it very clear, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Let's read it again. It says, Therefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost should not be forgiven unto men. You read the scriptures verses before. They were accusing Jesus of what? Of casting demons out with the power of Satan. So that's what he's talking. It's not taken out of context. It was previous verses. was talking about how the Pharisees were accusing him of being of Satan. Well, we're not taking it out of context. It made it very clear. Blasphemy of the Holy Ghost would not be forgiven you. So be careful. If we discuss this, these few weeks, we're going to be discussing about the Holy Ghost and how the Spirit of God used me in several meetings and revivals and how the Lord gave me word of knowledge and word of wisdom. Oh, I don't believe that. That's you of the devil. See, shh, don't endanger your, your spirit so for blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Be careful, children of God, that you do not blaspheme the Holy Spirit. You better respect God the Holy Ghost. He's the one who will reveal all truth. He's the one who will convict man of their sin. He's the one who seals us unto the day of redemption. Be quiet. Shh. Don't speak against the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God the Holy Spirit. He is the one in these last days who is bringing this last day of revival. He is the one who has the gifts who will minister among the body of Christ. He is the one that will draw all men to Jesus Christ. He is the one who will bring this last day of revival. Like I said, shh, beware that you not speak against the Holy Spirit. Let's go further. Let's go. And I say, let's go down further down. He says, And whosoever speak a word against the Son of Man, he shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speak against the Holy Ghost, did you hear that? Against the Holy Ghost, it should not be forgiven him, neither in this world or the world to come. Let's go down further. You can read the whole chapter right there. It talks about speaking against the Holy Ghost. This one sin, you will not be forgiven. He said, For I say unto you, Every idle word a man would speak 
they shall give an account therein the, the day of judgment. Verse 37 says, For by the word thou shalt be justified, and by thy word thou shalt be condemned. Every word you speak against the Holy Ghost, beware. Do please. And when we start talking about the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, I'm going to shoot straight with you. If you don't understand it, you don't believe it, shh, don't speak against something you don't understand. If I taste an apple and you never taste an apple and if I explain to you what it tastes like and you never uh, tasted before, how can you explain something you never experienced? So those ministers who preach that there is no such thing, shh, beware of blaspheming of the Holy Spirit. He is God, the Holy Spirit. This is one sin you're not going to be forgiven. This is one sin that God will not tolerate. One time I was ministering to a group of people. And I was beginning to lay hands and talking about the power of healing and of miracles. And as I stood in front of this individual, this man, young man says, Brother, will you pray for me? I got cancer. I said to him, Yes, Jesus can heal you this day. As I began to lay hands on him, the Holy Ghost said, Stop, son. I said, Why? Why would I have to stop? I said, Because someone is speaking against me. So what do you mean, Holy Spirit? There's a young lady in the audience right now is saying that you are operating by the power of demons. I says, I didn't know this person. There were several people there. I don't know. There were several women there. I don't know which one it was. He even told me who she was and what religion she attended to and why she believed that way because they taught her that anyone who does pray for the sick or cast out devils that miracles ended for the day of Pentecost that ended on those days of the old and he said because God is the same today and forever the Holy Ghost is God the Holy Ghost I stopped in the middle of praying and laying hands on that that gentleman and the Holy Ghost I went up to wreck directly to that young lady I said young lady you are of a certain religion and I mentioned I'm not going to mention the name just you know for the sake of argument I said you've been taught that we who lay hands on sick and cast out devils and heal the sick in the name of Jesus you've been taught that we operate by the power of Satan you need to repent because your soul is in danger of hell and fire she fell down on her knees and began to cry and ask God to forgive her. I did not know that lady from Adam. I went up to her directly and God told me to warn her that her soul was in danger of hell and fire. I did not know people there. I was just a guest. I just came and began to minister. But I went directed by the Holy Ghost. And I said, sister, I don't know you. But you're speaking in your mind and the Holy Ghost is telling me exactly what you're thinking. And by you thinking it, even though you don't even say it, you've committed a blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Repent before you leave this place or else you will be in danger of hell and fire. A lot of people say, well, I don't believe that. That's okay. That's okay. That's your choice. But if you don't understand something, shh, keep your mouth shut. Don't endanger your soul and spirit against the Holy Spirit. Don't speak about my Holy Ghost of my Father. The one who drawed me to the presence of my Father and to repentance. He is the one who will draw men unto Jesus. He is the one, the anointed one who will teach all men the good news. He is the one who will convict the world of their sin. He is God, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I tell you in these last days, brother, we're going to need the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. We need to begin not to be ashamed of the Holy Ghost. We need to begin to speak the oracles God by the Holy Ghost. It is not by might the word of God said, but it's by my Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It is by the spirit of the living God, brother, that these last days we're going to bring the souls to 
We're going to preach the gospel, but the Holy Ghost gives the increase. The Holy Ghost will convict them of their sin. Hallelujah. Because you can preach this Bible all day long, but it's the spirit of the living God that brings us to life. Hallelujah. It is by the Holy Ghost, brother. In these few weeks, we're going to be talking about the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Gifts of prophecy. Gift the word of knowledge. Gift the word of wisdom. There are people who witchcraft and fortune tellers. They try to they try to imitate the things of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. But let me tell you, this is the real power of the Holy Ghost. It's through Jesus. On day of Pentecost, on Acts, on chapter 2, you'll see when the Holy Ghost came upon the men and they began to speak in tongues. Brother, I don't believe it. That's okay. Like I said, shh, don't speak against the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm not saying to those Christians who don't speak in tongues, I'm not saying you don't have the Holy Spirit, but you do not have the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. For example, brothers, in the Bible, let's read in the scripture, 1 John chapter 5. Chapter 5, let's go there. 1 John chapter 5. It is very important, brothers. Oh, we're going to be talking about these few weeks about the gifts and how the gifts of the Holy Ghost are going to be manifested in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. There are three. Now, let me explain this. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. But the word three is in the Bible. Glory be to God. The Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Let's read 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And these three bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three are one. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. This I need to tell you. When you accept Jesus, you accept the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You can't separate the Holy Ghost from the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. They are one, as one, united as one. But let me tell you, brother, just like a husband and wife became one flesh, that is the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. You have not received the baptism of fire. That's the only difference. But you have... You have received Jesus. You have received the Father. You have received the Holy Spirit when you accepted Jesus Christ. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues on fire, that's all different altogether. It's just like when you have the Holy Ghost, you got the cruise control. But if you don't have the power of the Holy Ghost, you got the cruise control with all the 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 extra things in the vehicle that's that extra bonus the power that you need in these last days in these last days brother right now we need to pray for our brothers right now there's going through that uh, uh, earthquake uh, 7.00 we need to pray for those people right now father you just protect these people help those people right now we lift them up God in the name of Jesus the Holy Spirit just taught, brought it up to me and told me to, for us to pray everyone right now let's just pray a moment of prayer for them the Holy Spirit wants us to pray because there are people who have died and gone to hell but there are people who are under underneath certain cements and, and things that God will guide the right people to help these people to get save out of their uh, this uh, earthquake father right now touch the people i pray that you help the people and send help father in the name of jesus we pray i thank you god thank you holy spirit i'm sorry i had to interrupt this message but it was because the holy ghost wants us to pray for our brothers throughout they're going through these crises we need to lift each other up brother by the holy ghost i'm telling you right now these are the last days and we need the power of the Holy Ghost to manifest in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. When I was praying one time and as I was arning my shirt one time praying in tongues, glory to God in Jesus name the Holy Ghost told me son, your sister-in-law is in danger. I, I didn't know he was going to speak to me. He told me, tell him 
Tell her mother that her, her daughter's in danger. Tell her brother to pray in the Holy Spirit. We begin to pray in tongues. We begin speaking to the Father. God protect my sister-in-law. And the next thing you know, 30 minutes later, my sister-in-law called and said that some gentlemen with, with guns were trying to uh, attack her and try to make her go into the vehicle. But God protected her supernaturally. That's why I'm saying these last days, we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will tell you things that happen and tell you things that have had happened and things are going to happen. These are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Another time when I was praying in tongues, when I was doing some chores, oh, glory be to God. I remember that vividly. Glory be to God. That day I was praying in tongues, singing to my Jesus, praising the Lord as I was working. The Lord told me, son, one of your twin brothers is dead in danger the holy spirit once again began to speak to me in an audible voice glory be to god i know people don't believe in the gifts of the holy spirit that's okay like i said shh don't speak against the power of the holy spirit because you endanger your soul and you endanger your spirit you endanger your body because it's blasphemy against the holy spirit when you speak against something you don't understand so therefore don't speak in something you don't understand. Just put it in the shelf. If you don't understand, in due time you would understand it. But the gifts of the Holy Spirit are real, brother. The gifts of the Holy Spirit will minister among the regular people. You don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be an evangelist. You don't have to be a teacher. All you have to be is a believer. These signs will follow them that believe. If you are a believer, these signs will follow you, brothers and sisters. The gifts of the Holy Spirit lay hands on the sick and casts out devils. Hallelujah. And speak in tongues. Glory to God. Remember, the Bible says there are diversities of tongues, different manifestations of tongues. So don't confuse praying in tongues and speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is when you need an interpreter to speak when it's going to edify the church. Prayer in tongues is to edify oneself. See, you need that. That's for everybody. But the other manifestation of speaking in tongues is to give a prophecy, a word, of, uh, a word from the Lord. And then someone can translate it or else you yourself would translate it. But we'll go in details later on. But those are the gifts of the Holy Spirit that God's going to begin to manifest in the body of Christ. Not just prophets, not just teachers, not just pastors. I'm talking about a regular dishwasher or, or, or bus boy or a waiter or a cook. God is going to begin to use the body of Christ and the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And it's up to you to cover the gifts of the Holy Spirit so God could use you to let the Holy Ghost flow freely through you to minister to the people around you. Glory be to God. When the Holy Spirit told me that my, one of the brothers were in danger, I remember when I was younger, and I asked the Holy Spirit, I said, who it is? And he said to me, don't worry, just pray in the Spirit. And I began to pray, and I began to pray in tongues, and I felt a heaviness in my spirit. And I was praying in tongues. And That's the one, what I'm doing right now, that's praying in tongues. See, you don't need to interpret it because I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to my father, okay? See, speaking in tongues is like if I come and speak a word and then I interpret, that is for you to edify the church but uh, or the body or give a warning to someone. But this one I'm talking to, that's none of your business. I'm talking to my Jesus, okay? Glory be to God. So you have to understand people confuse the different uh, diversities of tongues because people have wrong concepts of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. But let's go on. And as I was praying in the Spirit, talking to my Jesus, talking in tongues, oh, and the Holy Spirit told me it's rolling. And I remember when I called, I, as soon as the Spirit left, I called my brother, my house when I was younger. I said, what's happened to my brother? And he said, how did you know? I said, how did I know what? What's wrong with him? 
And he said, well, he fell off of the back of the truck, but something pushed him out to the side. I know who that was. It was the angels of God. Because the Holy Spirit will warn you and protect your family members if you pray daily and speak to the Lord and have fellowship with him. But if you never spend time with God and never spend time with the Holy Spirit, how can he speak to you if you're so busy and looking at our love Lucy or as the world turns or search of tomorrow or someday yonder or whatever movie you're looking at and that's all you spend your time with is on TV land and looking at some movies and you're not listening to the word of God or, or spending time with the word of God or spending time in the presence of God. How can God talk to you? Hello? You're so busy with uh, what's the latest gossip and inquire? What's the latest this, the latest that? But the times you spend in God's word, you need to spend time in God's presence. Spend time in God's presence with the Holy Spirit and delight yourself in him. Then you will be able to see things in the spirit. But if you never spend time with God, no wonder why God can't talk to you. You, you, you have time for your friends. You have time for your family members. You have time for everybody else. But you never have time to speak to Jesus, to speak to the Holy Spirit. To speak to the Father and just tell him you just love him. And just tell him, oh my Jesus, here I am. Oh my Jesus, oh I just want to love you. I want to spend time with you in the word. I want to delight myself. But most Christians, the only time they pick this Bible up, once a week. And then they wonder, why doesn't God ever tell me something's going to happen to my family? Why did, he, why did he warn me about my cousin over here that was going to have a major accident? <coughs> I know why. Your, your, mind, your mind was so filtered with other thing else. How can he speak to you over I Love Lucy show? Or with your homeboys? Or what's the latest game? There's nothing wrong with that. What I'm just saying is, is if you spend 99% of the time with the world and 1%, which is probably once a week with God, how can he talk to you, your big head, if you never spend time with him? Hello? God is it's not a one-way conversation. When you come, God told me, he had me write down the other day, my people only come when they need me, but they never come to visit me and just to be with me and just to love me. See, God wants us to come in his presence. It's okay to ask for things. There's nothing wrong because that's your father. But can you imagine your father or mother and all the reason why your kid comes is just to give me, give me, my name is Jimmy. Give me all you could give me. But what about when you come to God's prayer? Don't you think he has needs? Have you ever asked Jesus, Father, I'm here for your needs. Father, I'm here to love you. Father, here to delight myself in you. See, that's a sign of success, of walking in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The only way you're going to walk in the gifts of the Holy Spirit is if you spend time with the giver, who is God. He's the one who's going to be able to talk to you by his spirit. But if you never spend time with him in his word or in his presence, and all you do is, oh, God, I need this. Father, I need this. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Give me all you could give me. That's all you come for. Hello? God sometimes wants you to visit him and delight yourself in him and just tell him you love him. And, Father, right now, there are people here. Next week, we're going to be talking about this more detail about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But you be with us, and I pray. And if you want to become a partner, call us. And you want to support us and continue in this ministry, call us and let me know or email me, uh, michaelfernandezministries at gmail.com. Uh, I'm here for you, and I'll be praying for you. Don't forget, God bless you, and have a good day.